Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Nelson's Corner. Tonight, we will be continuing on with the development of the card game engine. This will be part 10. We have our host, Mr. Nelson LeKay, joining us now. Nelson. Hey. Hey. Also, myself, Jason Busby. Now, tonight, unfortunately, we do not have Gavin nor Zach with us. This is kind of one of those last-minute recording things where we had an, an opportunity to get in here, and get a little bit more content, record it, but everyone else is kind of, well, missing. But uh, worry not, I will be playing the role of Gavin the best I can, minus the British accent. And, yeah, it's good enough, though I think Nelson's got quite a bit to cover tonight. So, Nelson, what exactly are we going to be doing? All right, so in the last video, we kind of, you saw how we broke apart these three main subsystems. Right. Um, we're going to be working on the properties subsystem this tonight. Okay. And we'll hopefully get that going to some extent. Okay, sounds good. So, yeah. Um, so, you ready to just jump right yeah, in? Yeah, let's just, let's just jump right in. Let's do it. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is I don't really like the um, this name of this project. <laughs> we're just going <laughs> to scrap everything, right? <laughs> no. Um, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Basically, I would rather have this cardgame.test.base or okay. cardgame.base.test um, just so that these will be the test for the base project, and then we'll make another one for the runtime project. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go remove this from existence, and of course, doing that doesn't actually remove it, so I'm going to open up Explorer which you can see, go back into card game and nuke these tests. Cool. And then I'm going to go create a new project, class library, card engine.base.tests, and delete this class, add a ref, or not, add a NuGet package for um, end unit. Yeah. I was worried for just a second. I thought you had forgotten everything. Um, yeah, and then we're also going to no. Certains. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Did wait, you put? Oh, okay, I didn't even see you click on in unit. That was yeah, good job. Or just hadn't updated on my end. Oh, okay. Get so that. now we have end unit influence insertions. Correct. Correct. So the first um, stuff we're going to be doing are the attached property. Um, our well, yeah, we're going to be dealing with the uh, da, 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 mainly with this guy, the I attach properties. We're going to be implementing this class, and um, yeah, and we're going to be testing him, and we'll see how he works. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to close out the diagram, and I'm going to create a new class. Oh no! Uh oh, what's wrong? Oh no! Card engine dot base dot test. <gasps> Oh, I can't believe that. How did you even manage to miss that? I don't know. Okay, so we're deleting the project again. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Opening the, it up, physically deleting here, keeping everything nice and sync with card game. Yeah, I was wondering why I was sorting on the top. That really threw me off, and I was... Uh, well, I... I, I, engine, I no card right. game. <laughs> dot based. Dot it there we go. Now it's sorting down there, so we know it's Delete good. Delete that out. Bring in your references. Awesome. So now we'll grab a new, or not new git, we'll grab an end unit. Yeah. Install, install, close, close, close. Okay, now pretend that didn't happen, and we're going to go ahead and create a class. Okay. This class is going to be called attached properties, and he's going to go ahead and implement, implement, I attached properties and we're going to bring in all of his members so this is pretty much all the stuff that we're all the public members that we are going to be creating but you'll see that we're going to have to do a lot of um, private implementation as well because this is a fairly complex system but i want to go ahead and show you guys what it's in the form of a test what the at least the first um the first bit of functionality that the attached properties is actually going to provide. So I'm going to create a class called attached properties tests, and he is going to be a um, test thing. <laughs> Sorry, it's late. It, it is very late, and it's a Friday night too. Text. Which, text you know, fixture. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to do a test basic property method, and he's going to be a test. So 
Um, actually, I am going to wrap these tests in regions because we're going to be writing private classes for all these tests to test everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll call this test basic property and region. Now, the way the system is going to work, the way this um, attached properties is going to work, and if you look at the public interface, hopefully it's a little bit clear, is that every single game object is going to have an arbitrary amount of properties that he can expose. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be exposing that by implementing a particular interface for every property type that he does expose. So the first step is we actually have to create the property that we want to expose on our test game object. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, um, I don't know, let's call this a, a property one. And he implements I attach property. And yes, we do have to reference card game base. If you don't have your sharper, you're going to have to do that through your references. Um, and then the only member that he needs to implement is equals, but we're going to throw in a public string value value and generate a constructor for it. Okay. Now, the unfortunate thing about um, resharper and private classes is that's gonna there's going to be a lot of squigglies until we actually start using it, so just ignore those. And then finally, we also have to implement the equals method to determine if this attached property equals the same thing as another one. Mm -hmm. And that's actually very straightforward to do because all we can do is say it, um, other property equals other as property one, if other property is null, return false. Otherwise, return other property dot value equals equals value. So yes, that's pretty straightforward. This is our just our test property guy. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a game object, um, and this is going to be the game object is going to expose this property one by implementing a particular interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Or let's call this game object one. When he implements I game object, do we ever do the, uh, no, we didn't. Good. Ignore me. Okay, fair enough. I have no idea what she's talking about. Okay, and I game object, he's going to have a constructor, and all his constructor is going to do is say id equals new game object id and if you don't remember that is the um that's just going to generate a new GUID. Um, we're going to leave this throwing an auto implement exception because we don't need it and then we're going to have this game object so imagine this game object as an individual card in the game or a or a player object or a battlefield object or something like this the way he's going to expose his properties is by implementing the i something interface <laughs> Uh, the i property provider of type property one. So I'm going to go ahead and implement that, and you'll see that we now have this public property one provide method. Um, and basically, all he's going to do is gives you return out property one, and we're going to have the constructor of our game object actually take in what he should provide as a property one for test purposes. Mm -hmm. So I just brought in a private read-only string, and then when we provide that property one, we just pass in property one value into its constructor. So this is the code required to get a game object, and we are going to be making an abstract game object class, so some of this code becomes redundant. Um, I can actually go ahead and do that right now. So that um, it I becomes just, redundant, or so that it's... Because that some of the redundant code goes away. Exactly. I just want to get rid of this. That's that's pointless mm -hmm. because we're not going to be messing with that yet. So I'm going to just make a uh, an abstract folder inside my test and make an abstract game object class that implements I game object and as an automatic property. And he's going to have a constructor that sets ID to new game object ID. So. That's that. So now we can have this implement game object instead, bring in the reference to abstract. Um, now we can delete this code, this code, and that code. And this needs to be abstract, which it is. Okay. okay. So here's our game object, and here's the property that he can provide. So our test basic property, what he's going to do is he's going to create a new attached properties class. Class. 
And then he's going to say, I mean, well, here's actually the small difficulty with this. Um, and that is we need to, well, yeah, I can just go ahead and do this. We'll see the problem when I see the problem immediately. Or not new game object, new game object one. And then I'm just going to say const string expected equals blah. Anything is, will do fine. And then attach properties dot. Um, and then we want to get a property one from game object dot ID. And we want to say should equals or should be expected. And actually, we need to do value dot should be expected. So this is our test. Now, the issue with this is that attach properties is actually going to, in order to work properly, he's going to have to depend on our game object repository class. Because as of right now, this is just a game object. And there's no way for attach properties to even reference this class because there's no way to kind of hook it up. But the code can compile at this point. So I can, if you want to be, you know, red, green, refactor style, we can go ahead and bring up unit tests, run unit tests, and see that they fail because obviously pro attach properties.git is not implemented. Mm -hmm. But, no. Yes. So that obviously fails at this point. And um, the first step that we need to do while implementing this attached properties is to kind of determine who he takes in or what, uh, who his dependencies are, because this class actually does have dependencies on other classes. Uh, the first dependency that we're going to have to deal with is he's going to have to have an iGame object repository. Right? Mm hmm. Um, the second thing that he needs is he needs a way to register game objects to himself. And this will be handled transparently through the game engine class, but we can go ahead and do that. We can say public void register um, uh, iGame object. Wow, my brain. And yes. So. We can go ahead and do that now. We can say attach properties. We're going to pass a null at the moment because we don't have an implementation for that yet. And then I'm going to do attach properties dot register and pass in game object. And so now at this point, this code should work at least from a public uh, or an external standpoint. And I can go ahead and show that doesn't because again we haven't implemented that method yet. So the first step to dealing with this class is, and this class is going to be very. <laughs> It's going to be very gnarly. <laughs> is that good um, or bad? <clears throat> well, both, I guess. It's a good challenge to kind of try to explain it and write it in a coherent way. Okay. Um, and the, the register method is going to do a lot of stuff. Basically, his responsibility is, is to take the type of this game object, extract all of the iProperty provider um, implementations from it, mm -hmm. And store it in himself in some sort of data structure that he can then access through the git method. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this a partial class. And then I'm going to create another code file. And the reason I'm creating another code file is that we're going to have to create two other classes to handle this these relationships. So I'm going to make an attached properties um, internal. File and he's going to be another partial class, and there we go. So he's going. This guy is just going to contain types that attached properties can access, and this guy will actually use those types. Right. Okay. Now the first, the first kind of uh, I mean, as you're thinking about it, the the way that we need to figure this out is we need a way to index all of the properties that a game object might possess. Um, and then we need to have another class that handles actually getting them out of um, refle using reflection. So we're going to start with a class called property key. And hopefully this will make sense once we have more code implemented. But 
the property key is going to be a class that is basically a unique. Uh, well, if you if you know RDBMSs, this is basically basically a composite key. Um, it's a way to look up something in the dictionary based off two values, mm -hmm. and those two values are going to be game object ID and property type. Okay, makes sense. So he's going to have a public game object ID called game object ID, and then he's going to have a public type property type, and we're going to have to bring in a system for that. Then I'm going to go ahead and generate his constructor, which is basically just going to get those two things and set them to his automatic properties. Um, and then the other important thing that I need to do is I need to generate a quality members because this is going to be treated as a value object. And it's going to be stored in a dictionary. And if you store things in a dictionary, you really ought to generate these members for performance reasons that hopefully will go under or go over at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and generate my quality members based off these two objects or based off these two uh, properties. Hit enter. And you'll see a bunch of code appeared. Uh, we have this equals method that takes in a property key. We have this equals method that takes in an object. The difference being the, the first one was a result of implementing this interface. And this equals is a result of overriding object.equals. And then we have the get hash code, which is the main important thing that we need. Uh, then we have an equality operator and an inequality operator all implemented for us. So now that we have the property key, we need one more class before we can actually add more code to attach properties. And I'm just going to stub this out, sort of, um, because hopefully it'll make more sense at some point. <laughs> and I'm going to call him property provider. He's going to have a constructor, and his constructor is going to take in a property key, an iGame object, and a method info. Oh, my computer stopped. Uh-oh. Hello, computer. Uh-oh. All right, hang on. I'll go ahead and pause the video, and we'll be back. Okay, so, Nelson, we've just resumed, and... I believe you've got it pretty much back to the same place. Yeah, hopefully. All right, well, let's just keep going. <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly what it looked like, you know, five minutes ago. but. Okay, so now we're going to type code, and Visual Studio is not going to crash. Are you um, sure? No. <laughs> okay. So we need first, we need a property key. Mm -hmm. And he is going to be a auto property with a private setter. Then we need an iGame object. And he's going to be a private member. Then we need a method info. Oh, don't tell me. Really? That's the exact same spot. It is. That's very interesting. That's amazing. I'm impressed. Yeah, I am too. I will once again pause. Okay, Nelson, we've resumed. <laughs> now, just to let everybody know, you did try this off camera just three seconds ago and it did work so if you type this in again and it crashes again it's, it's just got something against us recording on a Friday night yeah quite possibly um, I've never seen Visual Studio crash like immediately after writing the same code twice yeah I know same exact spot <laughs> okay so again we have a property key and he is going to be an auto property with a private setter then we have an iGame object he is going to be a private field. There we go. Then we have a method info. Yay. <laughs> called method, who's going to be a private object as well. Okay. And then finally, um, we're going to have a iAttached property get method. And basically, I'm going to break this out apart into two lines, although I could do it in one, just because we're going to be inserting some code in between these two lines once we make things more complicated. But I'm going to say answer equals I attach property method dot invoke on game object new object zero return answer. So is this uh, this class is uh, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. We 
take in property key just mm -hmm. for um, reference purposes, the game object, the actual game object that this uh, attached property belongs to, and a method info, which is the reflection uh, type that we can use to invoke the method dynamically. Right. And that's what we're doing here. When we call dot get, we are invoking whatever method that we pass in on this game object and returning the answer and casting it into an iAttach property. Mm -hmm. So now, hopefully, now that we have those two method or those two classes implemented, we can go ahead and start implementing our stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a private read-only dictionary that has a property key. And a property provider. And guess what he's going to be called? Providers. I don't know why that happened. Okay. And then he's going to be instantiated. And then I'm going to close and reopen this file so that squiggly went away from public. I don't know why Visual Studio does that sometimes. So the goal of this register method is going to essentially be to take apart this game object type and turn it into a bunch of property key property provider pairs and then put stuff that into the pro uh, provider's dictionary. Okay. So the first step is I'm going to do an awesome link query. Uh, handlers. Now this, this is going to be a bit fun to explain. Uh, from enter in game object dot get type dot get interfaces. Where enter is, oh yeah, I have to bring in system.link, alt enter, uh, system.link just appeared at the top. Where enter is generic type, and where enter dot get generic type definition equals type of i property, i property provider with an empty generic argument list. Then we're going to select out a new anonymous type with a key or a um, a type so it's going to be called not semicolon it's going to be called property type equals enter dot get generic arguments dot first and the method is going to be enter get methods dot first so yeah Basically, what this code's doing is we are iterating over every single interface that this game object implements. And if we go back to these tests, you'll see that this game object implements iGameObject through this um, abstract class. And I mean, base types, oh, it's going to do this again, isn't it? But pretend that there's iGameObject in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also implements iPropertyProvider. But if I go ahead and, ooh, this gets ugly very quickly. I'm not going to do that. Um, so you just remember about this method or this class uh, list. So the I property provider of type property one. I'm actually going to take nab this and stick it in the comment, so we can pretend that we're splitting the screen. Um, so the first interface that this gets is going to be I game object, and that is going to return false on his generic type because it's not a generic type. Then it's going to, the next interface is going to grab is I property provider, which is a generic type. So then we'll go to the next condition. The next condition says get generic type definition. And the funny thing about this is that's actually the opposite. It does the opposite of what you would think it would do if you take generic to mean C sharp generics. It's actually literally getting the generic as in the dictionary definition. Okay. The type, the generic type de uh, definition of this generic type. <laughs> it's, it, if you if you take the, I, I said generic twice in there. If right. you take the first one and use the definition of out of a dictionary, and the second one is the definition out of the C sharp language specification. Okay, that makes complete sense. <laughs> but basically, what it's doing is this type that we're getting here. Um, see, reflection has the concept of generics baked into it. So does the CLR. And when we get this interface from this get interfaces method, we're not getting an I property provider. We're getting an I property provider with generic type arguments passed into it. Right. So we're getting a special type back that is, yeah, the get generic type definition. What this will do is this will essentially strip out all of the generic type arguments of this type, of this um, type right there. 
um, enter as a type. Um, it's a type type or a type class. Um, yeah, it gets very meta once you start talking about reflection. The uh, the get generic type definition is going to return um, the I property provider with all of its generic type arguments stripped out. And what that allows us to do is that it allows us to compare it to this. And this is the only case in C sharp where referencing a generic um, a generic uh, type without passing in parameters is acceptable when it's passed into the type of operator. So basically what this type of operator is, it's going to return the generic type of I property provider, i.e. I property provider with all the generic arguments stripped out. Right. And that will compare it to this. And if it's the same thing, that means we hit this. That means we found a I property provider of something that we're inher implementing. So then what we do is now we know that we have the right interface selected as inner. We want to select out two pieces of information. First of all, we want to select out this. We want to find out what is the actual type that iProperty Provider is being, is, is being passed into iProperty Provider with its generic type arguments. What, what property are we exposing through this um, implementation? So that's going to be enter. And now remember, we're not working with the generic type de definition right here. We're working with the interface definition that contains the type, the generic arguments. So we're taking enter, we're getting his generic arguments, which will return an array of types that have been passed into um, that list. And then we're getting the first one out because we know that iProperty Provider only has one generic parameter, so therefore it's only going to have one generic argument, and we can just yank the first one out, and we know that we've got grabbed this piece of data. Right. The next thing we need is we need a reference to the method that um, – oh, there's a semicolon in there. Um, we need a reference to the method that this interface is exposed. This interface exposes, and we get that by well, saying in interface dot get methods dot first, and we can do that safely because I property provider only has one member. So, to recap, we're looping over everything that this class implements, yanking everything that has I property provider in it, taking out its argument, sticking it in property type, then taking out its method and sticking it in this method. Nice. So that will give us all the information we need in order to populate this provider's uh, field. So now we can do, and I'm going to, uh, I'll leave that there for a while, but eventually it's going to start bugging me. Uh, for each handler in handlers, and get used to this because um, all three of the subsystems that we're going to be implementing has similar code. So, yeah. So we're saying for each of our uh, handler and handlers, let's go ahead and create a property key that will uniquely identify the current property that we're looking at. And to do that, we need to instantiate a new property key, pass in gameobject.id and the property type, which is going to be handler.property type. The next thing we need to do is we need to say if providers contains key property type or property key sorry then go ahead and break because we've already done this guy so there's no reason to loop around over and over again to add a bunch of additional property providers and get everything confused mm -hmm. then we are going to figure out then we're i mean at this point we can just instantiate a property provider by instantiating a property provider uh, passing in the key, the game object, and the handler dot method. Now at this point, we have all the information we need in order to go providers, not prop, provider, no, providers, property key equals property provider. Cool. So at this point, that's all the code we need to get where we're going initially. And if we go ahead and run these tests again, we should get a non-implement exception, which is good because that means this code didn't fail, mm -hmm. this register code. But we're not exactly testing this register code. And the reason we're not is because I consider this register method to be an implementation detail of the interface. Um, this register method is not going to be exposed publicly anywhere. It's going to be used internally by the game engine class. So by, as a result, it's not in the interface at all because we don't want like random cards like registering themselves because that doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. No, it makes sense.
So now we can start working on the git method. And these two methods are incredibly similar. The only difference is this git method is generic, this git method isn't. And as I always do with stuff like this, I implement the generic method by just using a cast. So we can now we can do um, property type, which is going to be type of t property in game object ID. So sweet, one of our git methods is implemented at this point. Now we have our second git method. And this is going to be, we're going to be do, working a lot in this method, but for now, because we're only testing a very, very specific piece of functionality, we can leave this relatively simple. The first thing we need is to get a, create a new key based off the game object ID and the property type. This will allow us to uniquely identify our stuff. Then I can go ahead and say property provider, oh, whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay, control Z. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> New feature of Visual Studio. One one keystroke to delete your entire file. I guess so. Good thing it didn't crash. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know I've lost my undo history and I've been very upset. <laughs> um so yeah, so we're then we're gonna say if providers or if not providers dot try get value pass in the key then as an output parameter pass in provider then if this doesn't happen we're going to go ahead and throw a invalid argument ex or operation exception and we're going to say game object u does not expose property law and then we're going to separate these out into new lines because that's ugly da 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 da, -da. And then we're going to say this is the game object, so it's going to be game object ID. And then this is going to be the property, so it's going to be property type dot full name. So at this point, provider is now filled with a provider, mm -hmm. which is awesome because now we can just do return provider dot get. So yeah, again, we are going to be re revisiting both of these methods very soon. Um, they are going to get a lot more complicated, but for now, this actually does do everything we need it to. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and run this test and see what happens. Very nice. Ooh. So you'll see that I mean, we can go ahead and um, just hopefully driving this system home a little bit. Uh, da -da. We can go ahead and debug it. We create our new game object, attach properties, we register. This will loop through all the handlers, and in this case, there's only one handler. With the, the uh, that's the method provide the property type is property one. Now that loops over it, and then when we get, it's just going to do that, which is going to get the provider out of what we just created in the register method, and call its get method, which will return the proper prop property mm -hmm. by deferring off into the other into the actual game object itself. And then I'll just run that again to make it green. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, the next thing that we need to deal with are going to be the concept of property interceptors. And that's going to complicate things quite a bit, actually. But you see that we have these um, iProperty interceptors methods, mm -hmm. interfaces. This allows you to intercept any property being asked about on any game object. So you're commonly going to create another game object that implements a bunch of iProperty interceptors, and then you're going to attach him to the um, game object that you want to edit. Like, so for example, if you have an enchantment that makes all your creatures fly, you're going to want to attach a property interceptor to all of the game objects that you want to fly that changes the, the answer to, you know, do you fly? Right. Or get it, whether or not you fly property or however you want to call that. So to test it, we're going to create another test called test basic interceptor. And he's going to be a public void test basic interceptor. And he's going to be a test. And then we're going to basically do the same thing we did before. We're going to create a game what I call that last game object? Game object one? I think so. So we're going to call this game object two. Game object. 
and then we're going to have, let's just do a can fly attribute or property. Um, and he's going to implement I attach property. And so he has to implement this equals method. He's going to take in a bool can fly. Or sorry, that's going to be a um, auto property. And of course, it can't do that because it's this thing. Uh, we're going to call this can't fly property. And can't fly is like that. That's like that. And this is going to be pretty much the exact same. Um, var can fly equals other as can fly property. If can fly is null, return false. Otherwise, return can fly dot can fly equals can fly. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's our property. Um, we're going to have a game object that ha implements. I property provider of type can fly property. And he's going to go return out. He's going to say, let's say he says he does fly. So this is by default a flying card. Okay. Then we're going to create a, another game object, game object three, that implements game object, or uh, inherits from game object, but also implements I property interceptor. And he's going to implement I property interceptor of type can fly property. Basically, all he's going to do is he's going to return out a new can fly property that's going to say false. So if we were to attach this game object to this game object, whenever the system asks if this guy can fly, the response is going to be not, uh, no. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Because the interceptor. Yep. So, yeah, now we have to create classes. Um, or uh, objects, sorry. Um, so we need a... We need our flyer, game object two, and then we need our interceptor, the new game object three, and then we need our pro attached properties, equals new attached properties, pass in null for now, we don't need that guy. Then we do attach properties dot register flyer, and attach properties dot register interceptor. Then we need to do attach properties dot attach interceptor, and we're going to pass in the game object ID is going to be flyer dot ID, and the interceptor ID is going to be interceptor dot ID, and then we're going to say attach properties dot get can fly property, pass in the ID of our flyer dot ID, and then say can fly, and then how did I break that apart last time? Did I do that on... Yeah, okay. So we're going to do can fly should be false. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get a system on implement exception. And I don't know why it points me to there instead of elsewhere. Um, so let's go ahead and hunt down that guy right there. So we see that there's that. If I go ahead and remove this and make that method work, we're also going to get a fail because it says failed, expect, expected false, but found true. So this is properly returning true, but the interceptor is doing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So to attach an interceptor, um, it's a little bit more involved. And unfortunately, we do now need access to the game object repository. Okay. And so I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go ahead and implement the game object repository real fast. I'm going to sneak that class in. And the reason I don't feel bad about that is because it's so dead simple. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so to implement this, we now need this implemented. So let's go ahead and add a game object repository class to implements I game object repository. And he only has one method, get game object by ID. He's going to have a private read only dictionary of type game object ID and I game object. It's going to be called game objects. And it's going to be instantiated in his constructor. Then our game object ID is just going to say return game object ID like that. Actually, we can also do something like um, 
what we should do is I game object game object if not game objects try get value ID and then out game object throw new argument exception game object with ID not found as an ID and then finally return game object then he's gonna have another sneaky little method called register that is not going to be part of the main um, it's not going to be part of the main uh, interface but he is going to be accessible from the game engine itself it's going to take in a game object and it's going to say game objects add game object or sorry it's going to say game objects game object ID equals game object and you can probably quite clearly see why I don't, I'm not even going to bother to test this class because if this fails the BCL is broken. <laughs> right. So, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to go into our tests, which ran away somehow. Uh, there they are. And then we're going to instantiate our attach. We're going to first instantiate our repository. It's new game object repository. And that's not how you spell new. That's how you spell new. And we're going to say repository.register flyer and repository.register interceptor. And then we're going to pass that into the constructor here. So now attach properties has a way to take this interceptor ID and this flyer ID, look them up, and actually get the concrete classes of them. Okay. Or the concrete objects. Right. Which is the first thing we're going to do once we start implementing the attach interceptor method. And, the, well, the first thing we're going to do when we attach to, I'm repeating myself, we're going to get the interceptor by doing game objects dot get game object by ID and passing in the interceptor ID. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say inter intercepting methods equals, and guess what's going to come up over here? Pretty much the exact same code. In interceptor get type Get interfaces where inner is generic type where inner get generic type definition so get generic type definition equals type of i property interceptor empty generics select new property type is inner get generic type arguments dot first and method equals enter get methods methods dot first. Okay, so we're going to loop through all of these intercepting methods. Intercepting methods method in intercepting methods and again the same sort of pattern we're going to create a property key that we're going to be um, attaching on ourselves to new property key game object ID the property type is going to be intercepting method dot property type and then we're going to do property provider Provider, and then if not providers, try get value key or property key. Sorry, out provider. Now this is actually interesting. What we're about to do, basically, I want it to be possible for a class to attach itself as a property or attach itself as a property um, interceptor for a property that that class originally doesn't implement. Or it really, really doesn't expose. Okay. Originally doesn't expose words. So what that means is this provider is actually going to return false. So we need to create a blank provider that we can now attach onto for this, which starts to get us it back into impl implementing more of this class. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another constructor that's just going to take in a key. And he's going to leave game object and method as null. And then when he does the get, 
he's going to say if game object is null, return null. Null is going to be the first answer. Now this can be intercepted, but null will originally be the first answer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, or I'm going to say provider equals providers property key equals new pro property provider property key. And then we can just do that. So yeah, so now provider is going to be filled with either a, pr a provider that we got by having a previous game object registered, or he's going to be a new blank property provider that we can now talk talk to. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, we need to actually add more code to the property provider and add another class. We're going to actually be re representing the idea of a property interceptor as another internal class, or private class, sorry. So we're going to create another class called property interceptor. And he's going to take in an I game object interceptor, as well as a method info method. And um, sorry, also a property for a game object ID ID. So let's go ahead and make this an auto property. And then let's put these two as private read onlys. Then he's going to have one method called get. So you see the analogy between this and um, this guy. So this guy is just the property interceptor version of this, what we can chain up to make things happen. And then we'll have I attach property, last response. And then the same thing. We're just going to invoke the method. So I stuff and things. So we have an interceptor method that's being invoked on method or the field method if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this method is this is actually going to take some arguments. Um, the two arguments it's going to take, if we look at property interceptor, is the game object ID that we're intercepting, as well as the last response of the last I property interceptor, or the original response from the game object that we're intercepting. So those two, method, those two arguments are going to be passed in as this, as an object array, and it's just going to be game object.id and then last response. So yeah, there's our property interceptor. Mm -hmm. So now, now we can go ahead and actually add on some, um, the concept of property interceptors onto our property provider. And it's going to be pretty straightforward because all we need to do is have a list of property interceptors. And then I just brought in a system collection generic. Then I'm going to do that. And yeah, so then we need, on top of this, we need two more methods. We need attaching and removing interceptors. I'm actually going to only add the attach uh, interceptor method because that's the only one that's applicable to our test that we're trying to make pass. And I'm trying to, I'm really trying to be, you know, in the TDD mindset right now that we only add code that makes things pass. Right, right. So, and nothing more. So we're going to have an attach inter interceptor method. It takes in a property interceptor. And basically, all he's going to do is say interceptors.add interceptor. Now that we have that method exposed, we can now use our property interceptors when we do the get. But first, I'm actually going to go ahead and complete this method right here. And to complete this method, all I have to do is say provider.attach interceptor new property interceptor, pass in the game object ID of the interceptor. So that's going to be, um, or the game object ID of it, yeah. So that's going to be interceptor.id, then the game object, which is going to be interceptor, and then method info, which is going to be intercepting method dot method. So now we can finally, now that we have this attach interceptor method, everything's still going to work as normal, except for it's still going to fail. Well, we're going to get a system null reference exception, which is good that I did that. Basically, I knew it was still going to fail, but I thought I would get a different error than this. So let's go ahead and figure out why we're getting a system null reference exception before we start adding more code. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hit debug, and we get this. And the Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm stupid. There's two constructors here. 
one right here, one right here. I only instantiate interceptors in one of them. So there we go. Now we run this, and that's the error that I was expecting. To fix that error, all we have to do is change the behavior of our get method. So instead of just getting the answer from our original method, we now get to run this answer through all of our interceptors before we return him out. The easy way to do this, or rather the straightforward way to do this, is with the for each loop, but we're going to refactor this into link in a second, actually. So we're going to say for each of our interceptor in interceptors, answer equals interceptor dot get. Um, pass in the game object, which is going to be game object. Pass in the last, pass in the last response, which is going to be answer. Now, whenever uh, ReSharper sees this, and whenever you see this, you should remember there is a method called aggregate in link, which basically does exactly what we're doing here. Because if you look at this for each loop, we're looping over something, and then we're setting answer uh, iteratively over every single something that we're looping over. So let's go ahead and let ReSharper take care of this for us. And we get this. So interceptors, aggregate all the interceptors, pass in the initial uh, piece of data that we're going to be aggregating to. Then for every single interceptor, invoke this code, which will iteratively change answer to match whatever the most recent dot get is. Okay. So, yeah, actually, yeah, this cool. should make our test pass. Awesome. Sweet. So now we have to do one. Well, let's do, let's do another test. Let's do removing interceptors real fast. Okay. So public void test remove interceptor. And it's going to be pretty similar. The only difference is we're going to attach it. We're going to make sure it's false. And then we're going to say remove interceptor. We're going to pass in the flyer.id as a game object and the interceptor.id as the interceptor. And then this answer should reset itself to true. So if we go ahead and run this code, we should get an error. We should get, an, oh, I was running the wrong test. That confused me for a sec. Um, yeah, obviously we'll get a non-implemented non exception mm -hmm. until we actually implement the method. But again, I'm just to remove that just to make sure that I'm not being an idiot. And yes, we get expected true, but false found, or but found false. So remove interceptor is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, all we're going to have to do is get all of our, well, it can be straightforward um, if we do one more thing. And right now, the only way that we have our uh, providers uh, being indexed is through this dictionary uh, with the property key and the property provider. That's not indexed in the way we want it to be. Um, it's going to be very difficult to loop through every single property provider, find every single instance of um, that interceptor and remove them out. And as far as performance, I mean, I, I generally don't try to base everything I do around performance, but I would rather use a little bit more memory to not have to loop through every single ga uh, game object in the game, which could literally be hundreds of objects. Okay. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different... Um, dictionary that's going to have a game object ID and then a list of property providers. And this is going to be property providers by ID. And what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to be able to index or uh, kind of reverse engineer our um, data structure. So I'm going to go ahead and say that. That and that. The other important thing that we need to do is we ne now need to add this code to our register. Uh, we na now need to populate this when an object is registered. And so to do that, we're going to have to add a little bit more code, unfortunately. But hopefully it's not too bad. In here, we're going to make a, a list of, on a list, a list, uh, property providers. And we're going to call this by key. And then we're going to say if not our uh, property providers by ID, try get value, um, game object dot ID. Remember, we're indexing all of these property providers by the game object that they um, are part of. And then out by key. If that returns false, then go ahead and say by key equals property providers by ID, game object dot ID equals new list. 
So again, this is the same uh, pattern that I used earlier. Mm -hmm. um, by line 46, by key will either be an existing list or a new list that we just constructed. And then finally, we can just say, actually, I'm going to do this down here because it makes a little bit more sense. We can say by key dot add property provider. So now our property providers by ID is being populated. We can now go into removing this interceptor from this one particular game object. And to do that, the first step is to grab all of the providers that this game object exposes, which can be a list of property provider providers. If not, property provider ID dot try get value game object ID out providers. And then we're just going to throw a new key not found exception because that should never happen. And if it does happen, that means there's an error in some of your code. And then we're going to go ahead and loop over all these provider providers. And we're going to say provider dot remove interceptor, which isn't implemented yet. Remove interceptor. And then we're going to pass in the interceptor ID. And that's actually it. So let's go ahead and implement this method. I'm just going to get alt enter twice. All that's going to do is add a um, remove interceptor method under our attach interceptor. And basically all we have to do is we have to get the interceptor. So it's going to be interceptor equals interceptors first or default. And we're going to pass in if ID equals interceptor ID. If interceptor does not equal null, then interceptors dot remove interceptor. So this code should not work. And we have success. Let's go ahead and run all these tests again. And you see that everything is working the way it needs to. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one more thing that we're actually not going to implement today because we can't um, that attached properties does. And that's that it also shoots off events as things are attached, detached, and um, provided. Right. But we're not going to worry about that because we, well, we don't have a event publisher yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Beautiful. So is this about it? Everything you wanted to get through as far as uh, attached properties go? Yeah, it's completely functional. It does actually a fairly complex job mm -hmm. um, if you look at some of this code. But it's also the most vital aspect to this entire system. The idea that any card can have any property, um, even if that card was created before that property even existed in the game. But on top of that, any card can intercept any property of any game object. Right. Yeah, that's quite sexy. So from here, where do you think we're going we're gonna to go? Well, if we go ahead and look at the diagram, the stuff diagram, mm -hmm. which is the best name ever for a diagram. I know. <laughs> we've done this as best we can. Again, we'll revisit that once we implement the event handling. Um, I think, well, either event handling or command handling. Um, we can do event handling next then. Um, so that we can finish our attached properties, and then we can do our command handling, and then we'll pretty much be done with our base project. Okay, that sounds awesome. All right, then, with that, let's go ahead and bring this video to a close. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and thank you very much, Nelson, and that concludes this video.